This episode of Oops the Podcast is brought to you by Roman Swipes. Most guys have tried different ways to last longer, but thinking about your grandma doesn't always work. The folks at Roman, an online men's health company, are changing the game with Roman Swipes, the secret to longer lasting sex. Roman Swipes are clinically proven to make you last way longer in bed. They're effective, easy to use, and fast acting, but they don't require a prescription. They're super duper easy to use. Just take the swipes out of the packet, swipe it on, let it dry, and you're good to go. That's it. When you go to GetRoman.com slash Francis, you can get your first month of swipes for just five bucks. When you choose a monthly plan, if you use the link, GetRoman.com slash Francis. Welcome on into Oops the Podcast, everybody. We are here. We've got a great episode for you today. Later on, we'll be joined by Stephanie Simbari, who is a <clears throat> podcaster of great repute. Um, <laughs> we will be talking about uh, astrology and whether or not I believe in it. Uh, she will try to convince me that I do, and uh, as well as many other things. So, Stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, of course, as always, I'm joined by my dear co-host, Julio Gallarotti. Julio, welcome. Francis, thank you. How are you doing? I'm well. I'm excited. This is <laughs> well, fun, man. Well is good. Because you know why it's fun? We're hot off the heels of our big double date. I know. We went on a double date. We did it. Very exciting. We finally stretched our friendship and, and entered the outer realm of leaving the podcast room and actually hanging out with our significant others. In the, the real world. Realm. Yeah, it was big. What did we do? Well, first of all, Francis, I would like to say thank you for arranging such a lovely outing. Oh, my outing. God. My Francis, pleasure. So this is, I was like, dude, we should go on a double date, whatever. And he's like, dude, I have a great idea. Trust me. Mm. And I said, okay, great. I trust you. To the point where even my girlfriend was like, what are we doing exactly? And I was like, I don't know. She's like, what do you mean you don't know? She's like, how am I going to get dressed and stuff? I was like, just whatever. You're like, shut up. <laughs> shut your mouth. <laughs> I was like... Whatever we're gonna, t I think we're going on a boat, and that's all I know. So that's what we did. Yeah, we took a nice boat ride to a lovely golf course, Bayonne, baby, Bayonne. Yeah, uh, it was great, man. We had a great time. We put we played some mini golf on the putting green, some we did. impromptu mini golf. We sure did. We played putting. <laughs> we, we putted on the the mini golf course with our our girlfriends, and you know, of course, my girlfriend's footwear uh, tore up the green. <laughs> which made me very ashamed, but that's okay. Uh, and uh, it's amazing how girls, you teach them how to putt, and they're like, yeah, I get it, I get it. And then they hit like one good putt, and then they're like, yeah, I was I was pretty, and, and they look back and they're like, I was really good at that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, no, you fucking weren't, okay? Take you out on the golf course, let's see how many putts you actually make in a competitive round. That's they what were, I'd like they to both do. putted pretty well. Yeah, yeah, for, yes, for where they were at. Hillary, my girlfriend, hit like an, an 80-foot putt and got within like two feet of the hole. That was good. That was a and great putt. Now she's convinced she's Phil Mickelson. There you go. <laughs> it's like I work on my putting all the time, and now my girlfriend's like, it's easy. Putting's easy. It's like, <laughs> no, it isn't. There was a funny moment where I was disputing the stroke count, made things uncomfortable for like five seconds. <laughs> I was like, no, dude, that's five strokes. You're like, dude, that's six. I was like, no. And I was like, okay, whatever. I kept <laughs> counting it out for him, and he just refused to believe me. Just in the heat of the moment. Yeah, but we had a really nice time, and uh, the ladies seemed to enjoy themselves. They became fast friends. Yeah, they did. That was nice. Um, but, you know, it's so tough. That's so, so tough, right? Like, uh, I think, I wonder if guys, I think, care more about their girlfriends being friends then girls care about their boyfriends becoming friends. You think so? Because I was concerned about that too. I was really hoping that they would get along. Me too. Certainly. Um, but I do think that girls, when they introduce their boyfriends, I don't know. I, I think they understand that it's less likely that the guys will become friends for some reason. I, and that's that maybe too. I'm totally wrong about no, that. No, I think you're right. I think I think that like Girls drag guys along for double dates yeah. more often than guys, which we were the ones doing the dragging this time. Right. Although they seem, they both seemed, I mean, I don't know about Sierra, but I know that my girl was 
willing to do it. She's like, okay, yeah, I'm down, whatever. Right. You know what I mean? Yes, yes. I, uh, I, I, I think they were very up for it, and but I am fascinated by this, you know, of of if my girlfriend brought me on a double date to meet the you know the boyfriend of one of her dear friends you know is it more likely that he and i'll get along or less likely that the two women will get along i see here's the thing i feel like you and i and i'm speaking for you now but like if i'm on a double date with my girlfriend and her friend and her, and her boyfriend i'm going to try my best to make it work no matter what Hell i yeah. feel like girls are and i might be completely wrong about this but i feel like girls are less likely to just like be really nice and cool to this girl if they don't like her. Hmm. I, it's it interesting. Depends on who. Here's what I would say. I think that it's likely that the girls will be warm and nice to each other at first, but then realize they don't like each other and fall out. Whereas guys will be more likely to be cool, cold and standoffish at first, but then find that they really like each other and and actually be surprised by the bond they build. Mm, that's interesting. Yeah, I could see that. Maybe. Because there's been times where Hillary has tried to like drag me to shit. She'll be like, can we go on a double date with so-and-so? And I'll be like, I'll say yes, but she can tell maybe I'm a little reluctant. I'll say yes, but she can tell maybe I'm a little reluctant. But like, then she made me realize, she's like, he probably doesn't want to go on a double date with you either. Yeah. And then I'm like, how could... Who, and then I'm who like, the oh, fuck does he think he is? Yeah, but then I'm like, A fuck. senator? <laughs> Fuck him. Maybe that is true. He's though. dating your friend. She's a six. I don't want to hang out with that couple anymore. <laughs> but maybe that's a thing that we're spoiled because people just like want to hang out with comics, I feel like. So I feel like there's this thing where I, I'm serious. <laughs> that sounds fucked up. But I feel this energy where I'm always trying to like fend off new people. Mm -hmm. But like maybe they don't fucking like me either. It's true. It's totally possible. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, either way, you know, uh, we we looked the part, we looked good, we kind of dressed up, and uh, fortunately, <laughs> we've got the perfect shirts to wear if you are heading into a double date. Totally. If you guys are watching us on the YouTube channel right now, which I highly recommend you get into, mm -hmm. in front of our beautiful wall of shame, we're also rocking these fresh Kenny Flowers Kenny shirts. Kenny Flowers shirts. Now, these Kenny Flowers shirts are the most fun comfortable and sleek button down shirts I've ever worn. I've got the short sleeve paradise on <laughs> and you are wearing the, I don't even know what that one's called, but it's pretty dope. You got yeah. the palm trees on there. Yeah. You're wearing it open, long sleeve. It's comfortable as hell. It's light. It's good yeah. for you know, it's hot weather. These shirts are very well priced, guys. You can use promo code OOPS for 15 percent off the first order go to kennyflowers.com right now to get your shirts guys i know we're heading into cooler weather but we still got some time where it's warm and not only that but you want to be ready for next spring you want to rock these when you go down to florida for you know a winter break if you've got a spring break coming up this is the shirt for you go to kennyflowers.com right now use promo code oops for 15 percent off and they're great. They're snazzy. You know what I mean? Like you can wear them to an occasion. People will notice you. You're going to stand out and you're going to yeah. be comfortable. So get in there. Get yeah. flowers. Bingo. So we're lucky enough today to have Stephanie Simbari on Oops the Podcast. Welcome. Hey, thanks. How you doing? I'm doing good. This is, this is good. so cute. <laughs> this is fun. We have our this little shirts cute. on. Yeah, I love it. You guys look great. Yeah, thank uh, you. Stephanie uh, has, is, do people call you Stephanie? Steph? Yeah, but I mean, they're both my name. I've never called you Stephanie. This is weird. Stephanie. It feels really good to be called by such an official and presidential name. That's true. Stephanie. It has like nine letters. It's very <laughs> aggressive. Well, you are the sole proprietor. Well, not sole. You and your partner, Elizabeth Cott. You mm -hmm. guys have a very successful podcast and brand. That's now true. Called uh, That's So Retrograde. Mm -hmm. Which uh, I feel like you guys were ahead of the curve with the podcast situation. Yeah, we started yeah. our show. Um, we conceived of it in the end of 2014, and the first episode was launched in February of 2015. That's exciting. So that's You've been podcasting for almost four years. For over four years, almost five. I'm bad at that. That's okay. Figuring out when the, the year restarts. Math is not my strength either. Oh, I'm very good at math, oh. just not the year. I see. Yeah. The year math. Right. Year that's math, okay. calendar math. So it'll be five years in February. Right. Wow. Yeah. Great. Yeah, that's it's exciting. really fun. We love it. And this cool. is before like wellness made it into the digital space, as they say, I feel. Yeah, it's funny. It's funny that everyone's like 
wellness so trendy like you guys are really like in on the trend and we're just like we were just like crazy 28 year olds needing help right. 29 i mean 30 i don't know how old we are and we just went into our curiosity and that's like how the whole thing happened it's wild yeah it's been nice to watch like being friends with you i mean like thanks i remember when we were all what, 10 years ago doing comedy we literally had none of our shit together at all no i mean that's assuming that we have our shit together now like, i mean i, I think know. it's a process life but I definitely like was doing comedy and also teaching yoga at the comedy store. So I was always kind of like mm. this weird hybrid person. Um, but I think that the show really has like helped me really be in my strength. So you got to fill me in a little yeah. bit. Tell me. We just met. I know. Yeah. And, and I honestly am I'm woefully in the dark. I, I don't really do much homework and I should. And I'm That's sorry. Okay. That's fine. Uh, but I respect your honesty. <laughs> Tell me about the wellness yeah. that you guys traffic in. So it's pretty much like a mixed bag of all things that have to do with like wellness, consciousness, spirituality, mindfulness, nutrition, like all of the beauty, cannabis now, which is like nice. a wellness category. Crazy. I know. It's great i'm like i've been doing research in the field since i was 14 years old and <laughs> i can say i have my 10,000 hours of weed uh but yeah it's just anything that we think is like interesting and cool and has helped us um we talk about can i ask you a very specific question sure so marijuana yes uh i bought some weed lubricant for you i'm not sure what the brand was okay i have it still Yes. We tried it once, my girlfriend and me. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe, I, I don't think I really noticed anything. Well, it's not for you. Oh. It's for it's for <laughs> a vagina. Is it? Yeah, so the weed lube has an, like a, it's kind of funny. It has a calming effect on your vagina, much like it has on your mind. So, like, a lot of women have anxiety around sex and, like, they can't, get wet and mm -hmm. like they, they can't chill tight. they stay really tight it's hard to like come like so weed really just like makes it so that part of your body relaxes so that you can fully be in the moment like outside of your head God. but i wouldn't recommend putting it on your dick because it'll make it feel so weird like directly sorry i'm being very graphic no 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 it's Please. fine okay yeah. anything goes yeah uh, well, if it's not for me, then I really don't think we should be using it. No. Um. <laughs> well, uh, on the contrary, it kind of is for you because if your girlfriend feels good and is relaxed, isn't that so much better for you? I yeah, guess. Dude, on, I guess man. if you're into that sort of thing. Big yeah. Picture, bro. I was worried that her she was going to start stuffing ring dings up her vagina. I I used what? to have a I it's used like to the have a joke. Debbie snack cake. Yeah, that it gives your pussy the munchies. <laughs> Come on. It's funny. No, I like it. She got it. Yeah. yeah. No, I've had that Stephanie joke before. Got it. Yeah, but it's great for you. It's edible. You can. They also have suppositories for period cramps, really? and also for wow. butt stuff. Wow, for butt stuff too. Mm -hmm. I feel like it would be useful there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, butt's so tight. The butts, yeah, the butt needs the a little tightest. Loosening. Tightest. I don't know about that. That's uncharted territory for me. <laughs> That's not your thing. No. This is great. I'm saving it for my husband. I think I know. I mean, like I know you so well. Like I, I don't think we've ever talked about that though. About, I butt well, stuff. recently someone did. No, okay, never mind. We, this is what we talked about. I liked where that was Recently, going. Recently, someone fucked my butt crack. Oh, uh, gotcha. like, like like up and down, like breast slide. sex. Yeah, because I don't have any. He motorboated my ass. Basically. The titty credit or the ass I've credit seen that. Swipe. Yeah, I've it was seen pretty that. wild. In pornogra pornography, it was pretty pornographic. I have to say, and I was like, "Well, that was weird. <laughs> I don't know you at all." So he created a bridge, I presume, with his thumb. <laughs> Possibly two thumbs. I don't know what you're talking about. You know, he's holding the cheeks together. Oh right. And then he adds a roof uh -huh. with his thumb. Yeah. Right? Because think about with I'm not with, really sure how that worked out. Well, it's not gonna stay in. No. You a know? Roof with the thumb. Yeah, so so the cheeks are together right. and then he's holding the cheeks. Oh he's holding them. And he puts his thumbs over the top and then then oh, his so his penis is underneath, underneath the thumb. Thumb. Uh, so he can kind of go for it. I regret it. bringing this into the conversation. <laughs> <It's fascinating. laughs> well, think about this with breast sex. Um, I've never had it before. With titty fucking breast sex. Yeah, it's not you know, something you do with an A cup girl. It's also just not that great of a thing. She holds right. her breasts together and then creates a roof with her hands. Right. 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 It's not enough to just hold them together because it starts to pop out all right, the right, time. Right. Ah, so, oh, so it's yeah. like a cage. That's right. 
keeps it in there. Okay. Well, I yeah. will make note of that next time no one asks me to fuck my tits. <laughs> like, Good start. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Oops. Uh, the pod. I regret yeah. that whole experience. <laughs> that could be a nice optical illusion too. It's like yeah. a close up and it's like, oh, titty fucking. It's like, oh no, son, it's an ass. It's a butt. Do you know, oh, is butt. there a term for the butt cheek sex, non-penetration? I don't know. It's never happened to me before and I truly hope it never happens again. Really, it was bad. It wasn't bad. It was just like Nothing. very it was weird. weird. Like, yeah. Dude, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, it was like. Adults. Also, he sex. was choking me so hard. I was just like, I, "You're a stranger. Like, this is so strange. This is so not cool." Well, hold on a second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was he choking he you was tiny, while he was doing me. the? Yeah, it was the, a whole thing. I was just thing? going with it. Yeah. I don't even understand that. It was a lot. Because I don't. Understand. It was like he wasn't using my hand. His <laughs> there was no bridge. It was like. Stabilize. This guy sounds like the worst sexual partner ever. He was ever. a very tiny singer songwriter, so everything worked out that fine makes for me. Sense. Yeah. He was just trying to dominate you. Yeah, and I was like, You're like, dude, you're a little man. Yeah. You're Guys try to man. dominate me all the time, and I'm like, I'm dominant too. Mm. So you need to be into like dom for dom. Otherwise, we're not going to work out. Got it. So I feel like your personality is kind of a dominant personality. Yeah, I don't turn the other way. You know, they say like, however you are outside of sex is how you're. Like you're gonna be the opposite, right? So that's not you. No. Huh. I'm a, hmm. I'm a little bit, of, I think, a, kind of an aggressor across the board. Interesting. But I can be sweet and gentle too. Yeah. I just don't like being told what to do. Well, it's funny. I feel like being aware of your tendencies is like a potentially dominant thing. If you're aware of your things yeah. and you own them, then you are still in control of the situation. Right. You're like, this makes me insecure, but like because you're talking about it, somehow it gives you a level up still. Yeah, there's power in knowing. Right. For sure. Right. I think I would be more open to being like more submissive if I was like in a relationship and I really had like a trust with that person. But because I'm just like not in that place in my life, I'm like, I don't fucking, I don't know you. You can't tell me what to do. Like it's not playful. It's more like more fun for me if I like raise the stakes by being aggressive. But I read this book about dating and it's probably going to mean I'm going to die alone because... Women need to let the man be the alpha if they want an alpha male. It's like a whole thing. Do you want an alpha male? Yeah. Right. Of course. Well, I, since when did it all become so binary? Since, it, well, it's... In terms of you're either an alpha or okay, you're a beta. No, I read this I, book. I feel like there's a middle there ground. There is a middle ground, but I read this book and it's so, it's the title is so problematic and it was written in the 90s. So it, the whole thing is a little bit like dated, but it has a good point, which is that it's called Getting to I Do. Great book. Highly recommend. Highly recommend. And uh, it's about like how in every relationship there needs to be someone who has more masculine energy and someone who has more feminine energy. It doesn't even have to be gendered, but... It can't. You can't both have, be the masculine. You can't both be the feminine because you guys both need the same thing, and it's like not possible for that dynamic to work. The masculine cares how it thinks, and the feminine cares how it feels. So it's like supposed to be this balance, right? So it's not really gendered. It's just like energetic, right? It's like not too much, not too. You know what I mean? As long as it's yeah balanced out. Yeah. Like I was re reading something about this as far as like gender roles are concerned or whatever, um, like. It's okay to be a stay-at-home dad, but it just depends how you're a stay-at-home dad. Right. Like, if you come home, if you're a woman, you come home, and your husband's, like, burning the casserole and wearing an apron and be chasing the kids and, like, panicked, like, that's not attractive. Right. But if you come home and he, like, sits you down, he's like, relax, you've had a long day. I don't know, I'm touching Francis while I do this. It's fine. Relax, Did you like you've it? had a long day. <laughs> I'm, I'm calm. Gonna you, I'm right. going to get you a glass of wine. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, that's, like, attractive. Yeah. So it's, like, how you do it as opposed to like, what it is. Totally. You know yeah. What I, mean? I feel that. I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Well, so. Yeah. Let's say that you were married to a stay at home dad. Which I would never be, but okay. Why not? It's just not what I want from my man. What if he worked remotely from home? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Works remotely. That's fine. I just want him to have. <laughs> here's what it is I want to be with someone who has their a really like connected passion of their own. Right. And I just think someone's like, I'll just raise our kids. I'm like, get a fucking job. Like, I, I'm i like a mean house. I'm like a mean husband. <laughs> you like, don't want him to be like, you think this doesn't work, bitch? Yeah, like, I don't want that. Wiping these fucking floors for right. you. Yeah. Making them clean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Definitely whatever that is, is a no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so then, so is that something that we can say here on Oops the Podcast then? Like, what? is it potentially 
a mistake to get duped into being a stay-at-home dad. No, because that's what I'm saying doesn't necessarily apply to everyone. Like, right. we all want different things. I'm sure that there's someone out there who really would like that. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And there's I a think guy I out there like who wants it. to be that. Yeah, exactly. I would love it. If Play golf all reach day. Reach out to us, guys. If you ha- have a situation where you're married to or dating a person who like stays home and takes care of the home, and ha- and if it works for you, we love. To Here's hear why that. I would get concerned. It's my nightmare that someone would use me as their source of happiness. Right. I think that's a very different issue, though. No, but it's like if they don't have anything outside of the home. I mean, I guess there's like hobbies no, I see what you're and saying. friendship, but like, I just think it's important <laughs> for someone to have like a career or creative passion that like makes them feel good about themselves Sure. so that they're getting that fulfillment outside of the relationship. Because I've been in a relationship with someone who doesn't have that and it is the most draining thing. Mm-hmm. 100%. That makes sense. It's like sad. Right. And then they're like, all their eggs are in the Steph basket. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm a person too who has like ups and downs and I can't always be like fun and cool. And like, I also, it's my nature to take care of people. So I'll like let myself get sucked dry by someone because I just am busy taking care of them and forget that I need to like mine my own energy as well. Guys, support for Oops the Podcast comes from Manscaped, who is number one in men's Below the belt grooming, Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Uh, look, here's the deal, guys. We talked to Andrew Schultz a couple episodes about about uh, how he knows he's been going too hard and he needs to take a beat when his pubic hair gets out of control. Um, honestly, the best thing for that when you need to settle down and tighten yourself up and get back to your roots is the lawnmower 2.0 from manscaped this little trimmer baby oh my god it purrs you hear that it sounds like (laughs) heaven and it it gets in nice and close makes you look a lot better and bigger than you are and it has a guard to prevent you from nicking yourself which is as we both know is something i get these pinches when i use you know sideburn trimmers it's not meant for it. It's the main the, issue. The yes. lawnmower 2.0 is. Uh, I'm sick of having bloody testicles just because I'm trying to groom myself. Uh, that's why Manscaped has redesigned the electric trimmer. The lawnmower 2.0 has proprietary skin safe technology, so this trimmer won't nick or snag your nuts. Uh, manscaping accidents are finally the thing of the past thanks to this. And don't use the same trimmer on your face as you're using on your balls. That's just nasty. We all know that. I don't want crabs migrating up into my nostrils. Uh, Manscaped also has the Crop Preserver, an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. You already put deodorant on your armpits. Why are you neglecting deodorant on the smelliest part of your body? Get 20% off of plus free shipping with the code OOPS at manscaped.com. Always use the right tools for the job. Your balls will thank you. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code OOPS. Manscaped.com. 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use code OOPS. So I do want to make sure we know everything about you. Great. I love that. So you've got um, a podcast yeah. called Everything in Retrograde. Oh, that's, that's, that's so retrograde. retrograde. Excuse me. God damn it, Francis. <laughs> that's okay. Just fumbling around. That's okay. <laughs> Everything in Retrograde. No. That's so retrograde. Why did I say it again? What's wrong with me? I have a listening problem. <laughs> that's so retrograde. No, I yes. have a memory problem. Okay, I okay, really okay. do. Because you just told me and I heard it and then just immediately forgot. I'm right. so... So, That's So Retrograde is great. And it is... <laughs> An allu- He's like, I'm a huge fan. It's an <laughs> allusion it <laughs> to, I'm, I'm assuming, uh, Mercury being in retrograde. Yeah, it's a hybrid of That's So Raven and Mercury retrograde. Great That's fucking cool. name, by the way. That's cool. Thank you. It's a great name. You I came up name. with it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So, Thanks. are you a big uh, astrology person? I am. Let's talk about that. Okay. Are you a big astrology person, Julio? I'm big enough. I don't know about like the rising and the all that shit, but I know about like signs and if somebody acts a certain way, I'll be like, that's such a fucking Capricorn. Okay. So <laughs> Stephanie, yeah. I want you Francis. to sell me on astrology. Okay. If that's uh, all right. I could sell you on astrology if we knew your chart. Could we easier. play a game where we could 
you I, you could try to figure out what I am. I'm not great at this game, but I'm down to play. Do people play that? People do play that game. Um, okay. I I don't I'm not amazing at. I don't game. mean and that. I, I don't mean to put you on the spot. But, but I do feel like you must be born in. Okay, you're either an earth sign or an air sign. I feel like I can give you more information. Okay, good. That we can answer more questions. Great. Isn't it personality I'm like, why am I based? Doing this? <laughs> it's like personality, based, right? <laughs> yeah, but here's the thing: we all identify like the astrology that we kind of know mainstream is us identifying with our sun sign. So, like, I'm a Scorpio, sun sign, but that's only one element of your whole chart. So it doesn't really encapsulate much other than the way, than what your like primary soul's journey is in this world but doesn't really have as much have to do with like how people would identify you that's more of like your rising sign and do all of it does it all correspond with when you were born it has to do with the time and the place and the day obviously okay yeah. so so it's less about knowing my sun sign you, you guessing my sun sign is a silly activity guessing my birthday or like around where i was born is the more well nuanced. it's gonna be the same because if yeah, because the guessing your I need to know the year, I need to know the time, right. then I can know your moon and your rising and like what house everything is in. Like, okay. There's if a lot you, that goes into it. Let's do this. Let's talk for the next 45 minutes. Okay. And by the end of it, yeah. if you are able to guess yeah. my sign and when I was around when I was born, yeah. I will be blown away. I already have three guesses. Well, that, I, I want you to, I want to see, I will be blown away because you have a one in 12 chance. But it's not right? fair, really, because. Really, you're going to present to me more as your rising sign. I don't really know what that means. That, okay, so your sun is where the sun was when you were born. The rising sign is what what was on the horizon when you were born. And that's kind of the way that you show up in the world. That's like your personality. That's the way that people interpret you. Are those also the Capricorns yeah. and the things of the world? Yeah. So they're all, they're all that? They're all that. Your rising that. sign is different from your sun. But it's like, okay, so I'm like Scorpio sun, rising Taurus. I have a moon in Cancer. And then you have all the planets in other signs. And all the planets represent different attributes. So like when Mercury is in retrograde, Mercury is the planet of communication and of technology and of long distance travel. So that's why they're like, Mercury's in retrograde, my phone, my car. Like these are the things that Mercury governs uh -huh. then it also rules the sign of gemini so gemini is like classically the very talkative sign right and the sign that's like back and forth and is like two-faced because it can like take both sides of an argument right. and so every planet rules a sign and then it's like basically the way it's described is like the sign is the character the um planet is the clothing and then the house is like the play that the characters are in in their costumes so that's like the three pronged description of astrology. So okay, being a Taurus rising makes sense. I am Taurus rising. Yeah. yeah. So here's here's the thing. Another thing. So I want to at the end of our conversation, I do want you to yes. Guess. Okay, got it. It's all about you, Francis. Well, because <laughs> <Classic>. I. Classic. <laughs> I wonder. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. No, but because you already know his. Yeah, well, I don't know the rest of his, but I want to know the rest. So, yeah, I'm the only person here that we could. We should look it up, though. Yes. Uh, okay. It's easy to find. What, his internet. other stuff? Every, if you know if you the know time, time you're born. of your birth, you can find everything with a quick search. Got it. But my question is, mm -hmm. um, do, let me ask you this. Yeah. So, it shouldn't be hard to surmise that I have not been a major subscriber to astrology. In fact, I call. I am really not part of it. I don't follow it. I don't know anything about it. Everything you just said to me was Found brand new insane. information. Okay, it was just brand new. Right. Um, if someone tells you astrology is bullshit, you know, I don't believe in that. Yeah. Does that offend you? In the same way that if you told a Christian person or a Jewish person, faith is ridiculous and i'm an atheist i i don't look at i look down on anyone that believes in that stuff well i think it's rude to say something is ridiculous so i think that's if it was said to me in that way i might be offended just like what you believe is stupid basically i think that's not very nice okay but like i would never say that to a person of religious faith i just think like, it's not for me yeah but i think that when you don't if you choose in your life not to consider astrology all that you're doing is not giving yourself as much information as you could possibly have. 
That's what I think. I think it's a great tool and it can really help you relate to people. It can help you relate to yourself. It can help you relate to your work better. It's just an amazing way to understand things a little bit more deeply. But like, mm. if you're not into that, then like your life is yours to live. I guess that was a kind right. of a bad way to phrase it. You're right. No one would say you're an idiot for believing that. No, but that's I, no, too no, hard. no so I've right. had fights. See, that's why I answer like that because I've had fights with people who come for me like that. And I'm like, Look, if you don't want to fucking believe it, like, I don't give a shit. Live your life. Right. Like, it helps me. It's made my business successful. It's made other relationships of mine successful. So. Right. I, I, I guess what I should say, you know, in that parallel to, to religion, you would be an asshole if you were like, you're a Christian. You're an idiot Fuck for believing you. You're that. dumb. God's it's not more real. like, you know, if if someone said to you, ah, it's just not what I believe in, yada, yada, you react the same way that. Of a religious person might to hearing that someone is an atheist. No, I don't care. If you don't want to believe, that's on you. Got it, got it. But I think, I do think my true feeling, I would never say this because who fucking cares, but I'm like, well, that's dumb. Like, you're like just choosing not to get information. Why would you do that? Interesting. Like you can get all the information and then you can decide if it resonates with you or not. Like why wouldn't you just find out? Right. It just seems stupid to not... <laughs> explore it because it exists right so i don't really get why you would choose to just be like fuck that that's dumb everyone seems to really be going deep with themselves <laughs> right, but right not me right so many people believe this and take it as a helpful thing but i choose to not even explore it at all i think it's mm. because it's like it's fringe so. you know what i mean like right. it's totally like woo woo and it's like spiritual and it's intangible and it seems like it's not based in anything but there is a parallel to religion it's like just because we don't see god or have never met god doesn't mean that the presence or the idea of god doesn't help people immensely in their lives with healing and feeling love and connection like that's the point of all of that stuff right, mm -hmm. right the planet stuff like the astrology stuff is actually rooted in more substance even it actually is religion. yeah but then you'll you'll speak to a, a skeptic and they'll be like the planet, there's no way because this uh, the solar system is not the same as it was when it, it's like okay Right, right, right. Whatever. What you can still look at the sky and see the planet of Jupiter sometimes. Right. Let me ask you this: When you've met people, mm -hmm. and, and what's your sign? My sun sign is Scorpio. Scorpio. So, Scorpios are compatible with another type, right? Yeah. What's the other type? Well, everyone's compatible in different ways. Classically, your most compatible thing would be your opposite sign, which is what. So I would be most compatible with a Taurus. Okay. So. But Let's, I haven't necessarily found that to be true. Right. My question would be because it's just the sun sign, and you don't really—that doesn't hold much. Like water I think for it's you. more important to look at someone's Venus sign, oh, which boy. is the planet that rules love, okay, and beauty. And this is different from rising and moon. Yeah. So you have you every planet in the solar system has a sign in your chart. My Venus is in Libra, which means that I value harmony and balance in relationships. Got it. And I will the way that I will communicate and the way that it will function will always be guided towards that as my core value. And That's therefore Libra is the ruler of harmony and balance in relationships. Gotcha. Does that mean you look for another Libra in Venus relationships? You know, I don't know. It would be interesting because we would both be valuing the same thing. I think there's probably people with certain Venus signs that I wouldn't get along with. I just don't know what those are. All of this is leading right. to this question. Right. I know. It seems very like, what are we talking about? Do you become wary of people that you meet or go on a date with when you find out that their sign or their all of their identity astrologically is not compatible with who There's you are? There's two signs that I am weary of as far as dating is concerned in the sun. And that's Aquarians and that's Geminis. How? And if you met someone and you were on a date with them and the guy said, I'm an Aquarius, that, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm an Aquarius. Would you say it's fucking over? No, I wouldn't say it's over, but I know we would have certain yeah, challenges. Yeah. I know for a fact. Okay, because Aquarians live like they are in the future. They have their head forward thinking. They're very much not like a tethered, deep, like emotional exploring sign. And Scorpio mm -hmm. is all about like, being in the depths, being very emotional. And so it's I, whenever I'm with an Aquarius, there is always that thing where we just, our like soul, the way that we operate is just directed in different areas. So it's like a little bit harder to connect. I've dated Aquarians. 
Not that I wouldn't. Yeah. It's just like, oh, okay, I know what that challenge will be. I've never dated an Aquarian. I think you I might be an Aquarius. Either. Somewhere. We're gonna hold off. I'm I'm not even gonna <laughs> hold you. I'm not even gonna hold you to that. Okay. <laughs> because I want you to give your final okay. answer. That's one of my thoughts. That's of, one of my yeah. three guesses. When I think of an Aquarian, I think of somebody that works at an aquarium. <laughs> They're actually an air sign, not <laughs> a water sign. That's just what I think. What do you do for a living? I'm an Aquarian. I, Amazing. I, I, How often do you feed the penguins? <laughs> Can I come? Can I swim? You know, yeah. with dolphins sure. in the tank. That, Classic Aquarius. That would be we should do. awesome. Yeah. yeah, we should go to an aquarium. Be I cool love that. To date an Aquarian. Be nice. <laughs> very good okay enough from me I've yeah, asked too no, many no, questions I feel like this astrology is fascinating is, is, people want to talk about it but it's really really interesting when you look at your own chart that's when it really starts to get like whoa mm -hmm. yeah do you ever read the horoscope for the day and just think come on yeah you guys aren't even fucking trying like you don't know me yeah but more more of You've just used the most broad, vague language such that anybody reading this would apply that to themselves. Yeah, and that's why I think that astrology has gotten a little bit of a bad rap. So where is the seminal uh, horoscope? There's Every paper is different, like right? The paper? What the fuck is this? 1995? It's on Instagram. Oh, that's it? Yeah. <laughs> or, uh, we're picking up the New York Times and reading the horse. What are we yeah. doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it don't, don't, don't they do it in the daily paper? I mean, maybe, but I, I don't. That's not where you're going to read it. I'm paperless, so okay. I don't know about that. But there's a bunch of Instagram accounts that are really, really cool. There's um, my friend Shannon at Moon Gathering. There's Chani Nicholas. There's Danny Beinstein. There's Mystic Mama. There's Soul Astrology. There's like a thousand of them. Do they just And make they really it? go in. <clears throat> they just write it themselves theirs isn't they're not going to be like today for a scorpio the horoscope is they're going to be like today jupiter and neptune are squaring in the sign of libra and so all of us collectively are going to be experiencing x y and z like they're more on like the macro level which i really like that's cool because i like broad things that i can like apply to my own personal experiences i don't like being told like you're gonna feel this way because you don't know because it's like right. my chart is so individualized right and the more you know the more helpful it can be because it's like all right yeah. broadly speaking this is what's happening exactly you know this this and this about yourself therefore maybe you should consider this this and this mm -hmm. like, think... don't rush into things because today communication is going to be like really hectic right, right. i think so... at the very least like the messages are good in general for people yeah you know what i mean so the advice is typically advice that a person could heed and and have it be helpful. It's fully designed to help, to help you, you and help you evolve. Yeah, I'm down. I've always been down. That's all it is. Okay. Yeah. In of light of you that, have. I think we... <laughs> Stop it. You too. Okay. Hi, baby. Uh, I missed you. It's good to see I you. I missed you too. All right. Cut the shit. <laughs> In light of this, yes. I want uh, to hear... So jealous. Julio's. I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting hinges of Sagittarius. Oh. Uh, okay. Not going to hold you to that yet. <laughs> I told you this isn't my game. I want us to read Julio's horoscope okay. from a site or a, a person that you like. You like, And then I want us to see it, how, on, how on it is. The moon has entered fire Leo for the next 2.5 days, making it a powerful time for humanity to pursue our passions, explore our creativity, and open our hearts to love. Gemini, it's important for you to let your inner child out to play right now. You've been doing too much overthinking and not enough of simply being. Focus on what you need to feel like you're having and what you need to feel like you're having more fun and living more joyfully. Step out of mundane or repetitive modes of behavior that keep you in a zombie-like world. Adopt the beginner's mind with everything you approach today. Be here right now. There we go. P great advice. A, I feel like that's definitely true. B, even if it wasn't, it's still good fucking advice. Yeah. Fair. Totally fair. But what is to separate that from a self-help book? What separates it? That, to me, sounds like these self-help... People have been sending me self-help books against my will. Well, there's obviously something wrong with you. Well, I got, <laughs> I got fired in June from my job. And a lot of people okay. thought, I think, that I was going to spiral off the deep end okay. because I've done that before. Okay. And, uh, you have? Oh, yeah. Spiraled? Oh, yeah. 
and not wonder, not wonder in like a self de- destructive way. Pisces. More yeah. just like a more just like a um, I don't know, just a stop eating or something. Which you have done. Yeah, but I I'm eating a lot less. I I don't I don't know why that happens. I think that's just me being distracted. The point is, maybe you're trying to save money. It could be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Could move See, into she's a she's good. Apartment. She's good. Yeah. yeah must in a be must castle. be an aquarium. <laughs> um, must be an aquarium. So um, when what these self help books. I, I people send them to me and they yeah. and they say, My God, you've got to read this. It changed my life. Okay. I went through something similar to you. This will this will help you. Okay. And I try to read them. And I get one or two chapters in. And it's so broad and so uh not prescriptive, but rather it's like reading four hundred fortune cookies back to back. Well, I and I can't I can't root it. I can't connect it to my life. Well, these are that's because these are books that are being given to you. You're not seeking the information. So if you want a self-help book that would work for you, you need to be the one to find it. Yeah, but the, they're all like this. Right, but also I disagree say, with that. I, I yeah, very much disagree with that. All self-help books are different? Yeah, 100%. I've been, I've been looking Which through a lot of them. Which ones have you been given? The Obstacle is the Way. Never heard of it. 500,000 copies sold. Okay, well. That's a lot of copies. I skipped over that. Uh, written by a guy. And, you know, some of it's whatever, good. But I, I read it and I'm like, that's good. And then I immediately forget it. Mm-hmm. Because it's not it's not centered. It's not grounded. That's not what you need. Would my horoscope be more helpful? Well, what are you looking for? I don't know. I'm looking for a way out. Because of, you could say the same thing about therapy, dude. You know what I mean? You're like, ther- astrology sounds like therapy. Yeah, but therapy, therapy gives me use. techniques. Yeah. Not necessarily. Yes, my therapist has given oh. me breathing techniques. She's given me ways of framing my thought, of, of looking at my brain in a certain way. Yeah. Uh, almost, it's far more scientific. But there's me. different techniques for that, too. I think that... That sounds like a... yeah. Okay, let me ask you another question. <clears throat> Are you looking for... like? You don't have a job right now. I guess not. But I, I mean, that's silly to no, say. Comedians a... really don't have jobs. Right. Okay. We're comedians. Fine. Fair. But would you say that you feel like you're in your purpose? Yeah. You do feel like that. I think that what I'm doing is is all part and parcel of what I want to and should be doing. And do you feel like you're seeking guidance or help or people are thinking that you should be seeking guidance or help? I think a bit of both. Okay. I think a lot of people who should not be offering me guidance are. Right. That's annoying. That's, you need to not. Yeah. Well, I, I can't help it. They do it anyway. Yeah, but you don't have to read. But you can be like, thank you so much. I'm actually good. Yeah. And for the record, if the guy who is reading uh, or listening, if the guy who <laughs> sent me the obstacles the way is listening to this, thank you. It was a wonderful <laughs> gift. I have read a, a, enough of it and I'm going to keep trying stop stop trying to read something that you're not resonating with that's creating noise for you and more <coughs> resistance but i think the other problem is I, I i only really like reading novels then just fucking read novels why do you need self-help if you don't actually need self-help maybe for you your best self-care practice is to read a great novel that's a good thought i don't yeah, believe that self-help has to be like and now on page four or write down your feeling like it's like if what you need to feel good is to go outside and read your novel for an hour that's great yeah i have a pretty i have a pretty good uh regimen of self-help pr- stuff and that's great and it's you know exercise mm-hmm. uh it's it's uh laughing mm-hmm. trying to watch a funny show at the end of the night or something um Sleeping, yeah, right. Playing golf, getting mm-hmm. outside, getting a little bit of sun, not too much. Yeah, um, those are my things. That's, That's great. Cooking, so. cooking makes me feel good. Keep doing all the things that make you feel good, and don't do the things that don't make you feel good, and you'll be in a good spot. Mm. If you want more information about yourself, like what house your sun sign is in, to know like really what your soul's purpose could be, look into astrology. If you want to discover it for yourself and be on that journey. A little bit blind do that too it's fine it doesn't matter it's just information like literally right. what if that's very like helpful. i found yeah. out that my son is in the house of health and healing 
And so, and I found this out after I was already doing that's a retrograde for five years. Right. I was like, that's so crazy. Like, I am a communicator. I'm a comedian. I am a performer. I could have definitely been a therapist. But, like, it's no coincidence that the thing that is giving me success has to do with health and healing when that's, like, what I'm destined to be a part of. You're so helpful. It's funny. It's funny to watch, have watched you, you know, get into this role that you're now in as, like, a helpful person to people. It's important to me. I've gone to your live stuff, and I see these people, like, they're so psyched to listen to you. And I find that you give very insightful and like deep, good advice to them. Thank you. And it's you. nice. I'm sitting there like, look at that, huh? Son of a gun. I live it. I know. <laughs> yeah. What are your live shows like? It's basically like... Um, are, um, excuse me. Is yeah. it you and your it's podcast my, host? Yes. Got and it. so we have like a comic opener usually. Sometimes we have a musician also <clears throat> sing our theme song live, which is really fun. Cool. And then we'll do an interview with not a comic, with like a wellness person. Mm. Like on Thursday, we're doing Caroline's. Um, we're interviewing this woman named Elisa Vitti, who's a hor- female hormonal expert, like female biohacker, basically. Oh, cool. Because all these biohackers like Dave Asprey and um, Luke fucking, well, the guy with the red glasses. What the fuck? Who cares? Bono. Yeah, Bono. These guys are <laughs> doing male biohacking. You've heard of this, right? I have. But it's all based on like the male hormonal schedule, which has nothing to do with women. And she's kind of like the first person to be like, women don't peak at 7 a.m. Women peak in the afternoon. Like Mm. we just we have to like redefine what that like the whole like women like a man thing doesn't really work. Right. Because we're not built and designed like you guys. We can be just as strong and just as productive. It's just on a different kind of schedule. Mm -hmm. And she's really at the forefront of like helping people understand their cycle and helping people understand what women really need and what kind of foods to eat during that. It's just like so deep. So we're interviewing her. And then I think we'll do like a QA. and a Sometimes we'll do a meditation, but it doesn't really feel right to do that at Caroline's. Helpful for PC culture potentially too. What? It's like understanding gender. Mm. so that it, you we can just be specific in attacking equality as opposed to being like, we need to be exactly the same in every fucking way. It's so c- incorrect. Yeah, I know. I know. It's crazy. It's very, so that very that kind of insight up. is help, very helpful. I didn't know really about my period, like what it really was until I was 30 years old. And mean? I've been getting it for <coughs> 14 years or something. Wow. Or I would like to understand 16 the period years. more. Please. From a, from a, uh, please, sorry, keep going. No, basically, like, we all think, like, oh, you have your period, so once a month, you feel this way, and you're bleeding, and that's it. And there's, like, this disconnect between, like, the whole cycle of your body. The period is just one-fourth of your full cycle. So women are always, like, what's, like, I'm on my cycle. We live, you guys have a cycle, too, but it's just not as evident because you don't bleed. Oh, we do in our soul. But you have, no, you have a hormonal cycle as well. But it's more of a daily cycle than like a monthly cycle. Right. So as you wake up in the morning, the reason why you have a heart on is because your testosterone is peaking. Tight. I usually get them because I have to pee really badly. What? And then a, an erection stops me from doing that. Wait. I'm not I'm not horny in the morning. No, but your testosterone is peaking. So Fair. you're hard. Can we hope very quickly before we continue? Do you still attempt to pee while you have that erection? I Sometimes I don't have a choice. I have to pee so bad. What do you do? And then How do you it forks get out? like the, the devil's con- tongue. Uh, I do the concave torso move. So I'll put my ass way back and I'll just like crouch over the toilet and attempt to get the erection of face into the toilet. Is this a common male problem? For me, yeah. I turn my body into like a triangle. Oh, you're a, sitting. A. No, I'm standing, but I, I get like all concave uh-huh. so that my penis isn't facing the ceiling. Fair. It is now face, facing Straight the toilet. Straight down. Yep. And it also kind of feels, it's like hard to get it out too. The pee doesn't want to come out. Why does your dick get hard when you have to pee? That is science. In the morning. Science, that oh, is science. Morning. That yeah. does happen. Like the first yeah. pee of the day, you have to overcome the morning erection. My Wild. body, my theory, <laughs> my body so knows. Weird. That's weird as fuck. <laughs> my theory is that my body knows that if I have to pee in the night while I'm unconscious and yeah. asleep, uh, if I pee the bed, mm-hmm. it it could result in me not having sex because it's so embarrassing. True. And therefore, my body gives me an erection mm-hmm. to block the peeing because it's hard to pee when you have an erection. Mm-hmm. And it says, hold on, buddy. Wake up. You're about to embarrass yourself. And then I wake up. I've got the bone. Mm-hmm. I go to the bathroom, do something like what Julio does. A right? shape. Yep. And then... <laughs> Come back and then I'm ready to go to Pound Town. 
Is he, he's Francis, huh? the scientist, <laughs> not an Aquarius. Francis, the scientist, he makes up scientific theories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure that checks out, but I'm on board with whatever makes you feel good. <laughs> Francis, the Aquarian, not the Aquarian. That's hilarious. No, we've man. ruled that out. All right, hold on. So more about yeah. the period. Sorry yeah. for interrupting. No, no, it's fine. Mm-hmm. It's just very fascinating. There's four different si- there's four different phases of your cycle, and all different all the four different phases require different things different foods to nourish different exercises different kind of like there's times of your month when it's better to execute a plan there's times Mm -hmm. of the month where it's better to receive information there's times of the month where it's good to be organized it's like our brain chemistry and our body chemistry changes depending on what our temperature changes depending on where we are in our cycle so as a man how do you learn about i want so i didn't know what you guys were talking about the hormone hacking thing yeah what is that and how do I learn more because I need to figure this out for myself? For girls or for guys? For me, personally. For, for guys. men, I'm not the resource, the guy's name is Fuck, I forgot his name. I don't know who like the male biohacker who to look to for that is. But, but it's about that. It's about like when you're peaking, how to like do this and I need to I need to look into that. I think that Dave Asprey talks a bit about it in like the bulletproof of it all. Okay, right. Um, and then there's Luke. What is his fucking name? Biohacking. Just look up like male biohackers. Male Prominent bio. male biohackers. So this is like a good, a better way to not have to take like testosterone when you get older. Yeah, you can 100%. like figure it out. Mm. Male biohacking. There's no reason for you to have to do that. I don't think. Dude, we got to move to LA. Maybe LA is so ahead with all this get shit. The, get out of here. It, LA is so ahead. Stop with this that. Stuff. It's true. It's so easy to be healthy there. Yeah, it is. Okay. that I don't know that everybody in L- L.A. is necessarily healthier than everybody in, in New York. It's definitely not it's everybody, more but there's more people doing it. Hmm. Like, yeah. they've been ahead. Like, you guys have had Beyond Meat for, like, a decade. Yeah. And we're just finding yeah. out about it here. They've oh, also Beyond had the black for... lung yeah. from the amount of smog in the atmosphere. The black lung? The black you lung. guys are breathing in tar fumes and truck exhaust. I'm more concerned about All the night. fire, the fire. Yeah, oh, yeah. sure. Yeah. Wildfires that are it's licking not, at the, the yeah. bases of Malibu homes. That's yeah. not it's supposed not to happen. Sad. The air quality up. definitely is not good in LA. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I'm not saying it's great here in New York no, either. Everything smells like pee here. It should yeah. it should be like worse in New York than it is in LA, and it's not. Right. That doesn't make any what, sense. Air to quality. Me. Yeah. Right. 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 Because we have a, a cage of buildings that trap, you know, all the taxi and the car exhaust fumes in here, and it's so industrial. You also have Central Park that's taking a lot of the CO2 out of the atmosphere, isn't it? It's just a smaller area with fewer cars. I have no idea. Yeah. Like, LA's so broad. There's cars everywhere. Yeah. It's so big. Whatever. Mm. How long are you in town for? Till Saturday, Sunday? For a week. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Do oh. you like coming here? Well, I'm from here. Oh. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Do you like LA? Yes, I do. How long have you been there? Uh, 11 and a half years. Holy moly. Yeah. Is it right? It's so we wild. Eight years, probably. probably. Eight years, yeah. Fuck up. Do you still perform stand-up comedy? You know, I took a break for like a year, which is crazy. But I recently started feeling like I would like to maybe do it again. Yeah, you're nice. good. You should. I was very um, overwhelmed and uninspired, and I felt like I was doing the podcast, and I was writing, and I was acting, and I just was like, I can't do everything. Yeah. And I was just like, what is the thing that's making me feel like stressed and not joyful? Man, that's amazing. And it was that. Because yeah. I've gone through similar things of feeling overwhelmed, too much on my plate. Yeah. And the only thing that has always kept me happy and focused and the thing that I was most certain about was stand up. Yeah. Even though it's not the thing I'm that I'm best at. I think that's great. Yeah. yeah. How long have you been doing it for? It's a great question. I don't really know how to answer it. Okay. Because the first stand up show I ever did was ten years ago. Right. But then there were probably three to four years of kind of nonsense. Right. Where I would take six to eight months off, maybe a year to go to law school, things like that. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Jail. Mellow. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just total just took some time off to take the bar. Detours. <laughs> yeah. Of, of of different oh, towards other career fields. Right. And then finally I really buckled down and became really serious about it probably six years ago. That's great. 
But I always feel weird telling stand-ups that because it's like a dick measuring contest. Yeah. Nobody yeah, takes but you seriously. I feel the same way. Like I felt I had so much shame about stopping. Cause it was like I saw people stop over the years and it was always like, well, yeah, another one bites the dust. Yeah. He quit, like didn't have what it takes to make it. And it's like I, that's just fucked up. Like life isn't linear. Like it's not measurable in like that way. And it's not really kind to yourself to have judgment about that. Like how you find success and what you find success in and the way that you get that there has nothing to do with what someone else did and how they got there. Like you could be doing stand up for 15 years and get your first thing at year 16. <coughs> totally. and it could be dope. And then some fucking kid could come in, get a big job after two years and then maybe not not get anything for five years. You know, it's like everyone is right. all over the map that like to compare or have judgment around how you've done it and if that's like cool or like right. good yeah. enough yeah. is pointless that's because right. I was making myself sick continuously going up even though I was like I'm so tired I'm doing too much like not showing up as my best self but I couldn't let myself stop because I was like people are gonna think that right, I'm a quitter. Right. Who let's fucking also, cares what people think? 100%. Let's not forget, too, that you stopped doing it once this started blowing up. And this is a thing that And I've been fucking writing a TV show, got a development totally. deal, was acting, you were in that, you shot a show. Movies. Yeah, like, it's not like I wasn't doing anything, but still, it was like... Totally. But that's, like, the time where you stopped doing as much stand-up when the other things that were brought to you because of stand-up take up your time and that's okay yeah but it's in my brain quitting. i was like it's forever totally. and then it was interesting when i was laying in bed at night at night like starting like a month or two ago where i was like in bed like suddenly all my old jokes were coming back to me and i was having like new ideas and i was like it's cool that i let myself find this organically instead of mm -hmm. forcing yourself forcing myself to do it and then it's you not like i was making a ton of money or something doing right. it 100%. it's like just for me totally i think it's sort of like if you have an oil well and all these years you suck the oil out and all of a sudden the process of sucking the oil out <clears throat> becomes miserable mm -hmm. and the oil starts to run dry. Mm -hmm. and then you leave that site for a year. Yeah. And all of a sudden the oil starts oozing out of the ground again. That's beautiful. Yeah. There you go. Oil. It's yeah. exactly that. You have good metaphors. That's too. A really, I am all about, really I, a good metaphor. I'm a, I, think, I think I'm good at them. I'm going to write a book of metaphors. That's great. No, I don't want to do that. A metaphorian. Yeah. It's my sign. <laughs> Fuck you guys. All right. Well, let's play the game now. Let's let's see what you think. All okay. right. Let's give you a crack. Oh, we're playing the game. Yeah. I haven't talked about any of my regrets yet. We're oh, gonna, shit. We're going to get there. What time is it? We're okay. We're good. Okay, perfect. Yeah. None of your business. Okay, sorry. My bad. <laughs> cut we're, that. Cut that We're out. in a basement. It's not edit? for you to know what time it is. Do you guys is. edit this shit? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we do some okay, editing. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I want to hear what game. you think I am. I honestly have no idea. It's weird because you're presenting in multiple different ways, but are you a Virgo? No. Okay. Are you an earth sign? I don't know what that means. Earth signs are Capricorn, Virgo, and Taurus. So you're guessing all three of those? I'm wondering if you're an earth sign. I feel like you need to actually guess those three. I said Virgo. I'm not a Virgo. Are you an earth sign? No. Okay. <laughs> you're not an Aquarius. Correct. And you're not a Sagittarius. That's right. You are a Sagittarius. No, I'm not. Okay. Oh. All my guesses were wrong. Like I said, not my game. Got it. Are there people who can nail it on yeah. the first side? Oh side? my god, there's some but I I'm better at <laughs> rising signs because I don't I don't know you. Well then let's find out what my rising sign is. Well you is. have to know what time you were born. Uh, time? Yeah, the yeah. exact specific Wait, time. Are the you the fuck hold on, out hold, out on here. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right. Okay. Hold on. You have a girlfriend. How long have you had your girlfriend for? Wow. This is some Sherlock Holmes shit now. Senior breakup. This yeah. Is uh, no, but this one. always in a relationship. Mm. <laughs> I am in a relationship now for just over a year. Okay. And you. My you, friends in Spain always used to call me senior breakup. You're a serial monogamist. <laughs> and your friends in Spain. Oh, wait, no. Okay. Okay. That's a joke. <laughs> one day he just started calling himself senior breakup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the funniest Game thing. it to yourself. I studied abroad, Mexico. <laughs> they started calling me that because I was always breaking up with Stop. people. Senior breakup. <laughs> okay, that's ridiculous. <laughs> well, that was their word for me. I didn't speak Senior Spanish. Oh. Yeah. Okay, you're not an Earth sign, but I guarantee you have Earth in your chart. Uh -huh. I feel like you have, based on the cleanliness of your apartment, you you must be a Virgo somewhere. I, I don't. I don't know. Okay, we're gonna find out. Oh, fuck. 
Pisces? Yeah. If you're a water sign, that'll be wild. Are you a Pisces? I don't, I'm not a Pisces. Yeah. So far, you've guessed six. I guess Pisces. He guessed so. Fine. Well, then we've eliminated because then you kind of... Okay, you're a re- Cancer. Nope. Fuck. <laughs> are you How a Scorpio? Are there? are there 12? Are you not a water sign? Are you a Libra? I am not a Scorpio and I am not a Libra. What the you are fuck? 0 for 9. We have, we... I don't know what you are. I told you this isn't my game. So isn't you're it based either... on personality? Like, can't you, isn't it? Are you a Gemini? Nope. Capricorn? Okay. If, he, if you get it with the last one available. You're like forcing me into this game that I didn't want to play. For 10. I'm not putting it on you. I'm just saying I feel like this is much harder than people think. It, I, I said that. Yeah. Okay, you're not a Capricorn. You're not an Aquarius. Correct. You're not a Pisces. Nope. Aries? Yes. There it is. I said that. Fire sign or earth sign. I didn't guess Aries. I don't know what. what? You're a fire sign. I am a fire sign. You beat it. Aries. I, did you ask me about In the me beginning, I was, I was like, are you a fire sign? Or, you're either a fire sign or a See, I, I didn't even sign. know which one it, it was in. But that's why I said Sagittarius, because it felt fiery to me. Uh-huh. Um, I'm Aries. Okay. March 26th. Okay. It's my birthday. Yeah. So is that, what does that mean? What am I supposed to be? Aries, like to be very they're usually like extra like extroverted <laughs> yeah but i mean like, like there you the go you know uh, very like like a very fiery kind of all right extrovert. but here's the wild thing right so but you have a groundedness which is why i think you have earth in your chart my sister and is also an aries okay but she is the polar opposite of me because you guys have different rising signs and different moon signs. Well, then it's all then it's all irrelevant. No, what I'm telling you is that your sun sign isn't about it's not really your personality. Your personality more is displayed in your rising sign. But there are definitely people who believe that their sun sign does cl- work with their yeah, but that's like it has to do with their insides. So they're just so not digging deep. The way enough. that exactly those people are fucking morons. They are, dumb. and we all agree. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, that's very interesting. I want to know the rest of your chart. Let me tell you something. Tell me. I was in a relationship with somebody mm-hmm. who was big on this mm-hmm. stuff, mm-hmm. and it was tough for us because of that. Really? Well, she every morning she would just tell me how I was going to be that day. That feels unstable. She would foist upon me my fate as read through the alignment of celestial bodies. Mm -hmm. And that felt absurd to me. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't, I'm very into astrology and I wouldn't be doing that. Yeah, it's not, that's not the purpose of it. It's not supposed to be some kind of like indoctrinating thing that like is guaranteed. And it's it's just, you know, it's like, you take what you want from it. It can be helpful. It's definitely not supposed to alienate you. Yeah. Mm. Like that's definitely (laughs) not the goal. Um, It just sounds like maybe this person wasn't your match. That's right. Yeah. So anything that she was doing would probably have been really annoying to you. Could be. Yeah. Senior the, breakup. Senior breakup. <laughs> senior do break breakup. At it again. <laughs> Broke up. Senior got together again. Then senior breakup again. Mm. Um, so. <laughs> senior breakup. Um, Harry Aries. Julia, why don't you ask her the point of the podcast? Okay. So, yeah. yeah. So, obviously, what we do when we have oh, guests on sorry. here, we like to see um, if people feel like they've made mistakes in their lives. Mm. Yeah. Yes. And let me, let me qualify that by adding everybody says when we ask this question well you know all my mistakes taught me something or i learned from them lessons so i don't really feel like they were mistakes yeah but how boring is that (laughs) it it is and we all agree to that right you know the question is my l's and make them lessons yeah how can like you that. point to Chance something that truly <laughs> was like a, a, a lapse in judgment right. or a, something that you were like, holy shit, at that point, I thought I was fucked. Right. Um, Could be in a relationship, at a job. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. I think that most of my regrets come in the realm of relationship. Great. For sure. Or sexual experiences. <gasps> Even more fun. Definitely that. Okay, I had an experience recently. Was it the butt fucking thing? I was thinking the butt titty fucking. <laughs> no, weirdly, I didn't regret that. <laughs> You're like, oh, this is weird. Weirdly. Okay. Cheek sliding. I thought that was fascinating. That guy was, that was very interesting. Um, <laughs> No, I had an experience recently where I was hooking up with someone who is uh, like a well-known person Mm -hmm. and 
it was like a one night stand basically. And he didn't want to use a condom. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm not fucking you without a condom. I don't know you. And I don't want to have your baby or get an STD. Like, I just was, like, being responsible for, like, the first time ever. Because I've definitely, like, done worse for less, like, many times. Like, Mm -hmm. the amount of times that I've lived in regret because I fucked someone without a condom or had to get plan B and, like, worried that you just go into, like, a shame spiral. And I'm just too old at this point to, like, put myself through that. So in the moment, I was, like, feeling really proud of myself and, like, very responsible. And then, like two days went by and I was like suddenly slammed into like a corner of regret where I'm like, why didn't I just take the dick? Like why? Oh, <laughs> like who great. cares? Like who, like you have fucked so many people without condoms. Why all of a sudden now at almost 34, are you like deciding to put your foot down with someone that you really wanted to sleep with? And now it's like gone forever. Cause he thinks that I don't like him. He doesn't understand that I was just like really taking care of myself. And that weirdly gave me regret. I like told my girlfriends, like, why do you regret that? That guy's an asshole. And I'm like, because. Wait, you guys that... didn't do it? No. Oh, wow. Let me Twice ask you this. he tried. And I both times I was like, dude, I said use a condom. Wait, wait, wait. Wow. It was so. Tw- twice crazy. in the same night? It was like once at night and once in the morning. So this is a guy you always wanted to bang. Yeah. And you finally get there. You're staring at over the lake of banging. Mm-hmm. You're like, I can dive into this lake right now. Oh, I'm diving in. But you just decided not to because of the condom thing. Uh-huh. Do you think that because you like him so much, you got in your head? No, I'm just not. Like or You were so into the idea of having sex with him someday. I was in the moment wanting to do it. But I also was in the moment knowing that if I did it like that, I would have not been able to fully enjoy it because I would have been worrying about. Right, right, right. Getting mm-hmm. cummed in or getting a disease. That's smart. What Mostly the, getting cummed in. What? A, why would he not do it still? I don't what know. Fuck? What's wrong with this? Guy? Did he not have them? Like I. Well, that's. And we like kind of communicated a... about it, but he's like very like cagey, and it's just really strange. So the regret so is kind of funny because it's like I was in my integrity. I like knew I was doing the right thing. I feel like I did the right thing, but because I didn't. I thought like it would also make him like come back around and be like, she's so like <laughs> independent and strong and like not thoughty. Right. And then it was just like, that's too much work. Like, bye. And so when he turned his back, I'm like, wait, <laughs> who cares? Don't go. <laughs> Rub your herpes all over me. Like, I don't care. I, mean, I don't think he has it. But still, like I was the regret was that I didn't just fuck myself up. That is Isn't that very like backwards and That's weird? That's a great oops. That's a good oops. <laughs> you you get your your person right there, the mm-hmm. pedestal, your whole life. Finally they're in front of you, they're rocked up, they're ready to go, and you're like put a condom on and they say no, yeah. and then it's over. Yeah. So And in, I slept at his house. Negotiations gone wrong. Well at least you slept at his house. I mean Did you, you fool around with him? him? Yeah, we did. Well then that's not a total loss. Oh, lucky me, I sucked his dick. <laughs> oh, I, I maybe maybe he chowed on you. I am just so lucky. Well, maybe he performed oral sex on you too. <laughs> no, and then, we didn't. You started that off with he chowed on your <laughs> You hug. <laughs> Shout on your oyster basket. I don't know. I'm just making things up now. It was honestly really sad because he was someone that like I've seen around so much. And I was like, in the back of my head, I was like, I feel like there's a vibe there, but I was never going to push for it because I was like, I think everyone might think that there's a vibe there because he's like so hot. Right. So I was like, whatever, whatever. And then it did come back around to me and I was like, I fucking knew it. Hell yeah. High five me. Wow. We had like a magical night. We like went to dinner. We like made out in this Uber. Like it was a whole thing. We get back to the place and it was like full rug being pulled out from underneath me. And I just was wow. like, fuck. Do you think the doors closed forever? I mean, no. Like we text a little bit, but uh, it's also weird because it's like, you think I don't like, I w- we talked and right. he was like, you weren't really that into it. And I was like, no, I just wanted there to be a, a condom. Right. Mm. But it's kind of interesting too, because I wouldn't have been able to have this conversation last year. I would have had, I wouldn't have been, a- I wouldn't, I wasn't strong enough within myself to put my foot down like that even a year ago. Like, I feel like it represents like a lot of growth. And I look Great. back on like my younger self who in my twenties, literally, if a guy was like, I don't want to use a condom. I was like, Fine. Like, put myself in a bad place and, like, in danger and in stress because I didn't, not like I was being raped or anything, but, like, a lot of women 
don't have the capacity to say no because they want so badly for you to like them. Right. And mm-hmm. that's how I was. I was always so afraid that if I like said what I actually needed or put my foot down in some way, then I would be discarded. Right. And it's like, at this point, if you're going to discard me because of that, because I have fucking integrity and don't want to put myself in danger, then you should go fuck yourself. But that's like a very adult, like new yeah. strength. That Never I, too late to grow up. Yeah. So I, I was proud of myself the next day for that. I was like, on behalf of all women, I fucking put my foot down. And then like the next day after that, I was like, I'm an idiot. Like, <laughs> okay. fuck. Yeah. 34 is the new 24. Yeah, right. You know? sure. And good for you. Like, it's okay. At the end of the day, that's a good thing to, to, to stand up for. Mm-hmm. Because like you said, like... Raw dog in it and then being stressed out forever sucks. Also, as like a prominent person, like he should have been thanking me. 100%. He should have been like, thank you. This is something I've always wondered about. Are famous people just willy nilly (coughs) banging and and not being careful? Yeah, so many people who are famous have herpes. Wow. And are just like arrogant about it. Like, you're lucky to be banging me. I'm not wearing a condom. It's not. It's like, cool, you fucked me once. I never talked to you again. And now I also have herpes. Like, what? Right. And this guy didn't have herpes. I checked. But it was more about. Well, of course. I always looked. Yeah, but but, but that's not. not, He could not be. He might not be having an outbreak. Well, if you don't have an outbreak, there's not really much to be concerned about. Did you go with a black light and really cozy on up to take a deep I would say it was like my hand was really investigating as for I was about to bumps, put my mouth yes. on his penis. Irritating <laughs> areas. This yeah. is still of not, yeah. I don't, that's a field test. And well, just because a blind person nothing. can't find Braille doesn't mean there's no book. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I don't know. Hey. That's great. It worked. I've been blacklighted before. Have you? Yeah. Is that a whorehouse? No, no, no. They do that. It's I, a smart thing to do. I was sleeping with somebody and she's like, so this is what's going to happen. And I was like, oh, okay. She goes, I'm going to inspect you to make sure that you're clean. We're going to have sex. And then I'm going to sleep on the floor. Because oh. it's better for my back. So if you need me. <laughs> What? If you need me, I'll be down there. And she like, sounds like an aquarium. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a come on. That's aquarium. really wild. Is she, was she 95? How old was she? Did she she, just she Larry Bird? <laughs> no, she, was like a normal, she must have been like late 20s, but I found this to be like very formal. Right. In my head, I was like, were you previously a sex worker? I didn't say that. Um, but she may have maybe been. I have no mm-hmm. idea. Whatever. But then it ended up being a nice experience. It was very formal, I mm-hmm. felt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She inspected me with a black light. And, you know, felt that it was good to go. Wow. We had a nice evening Well, you can't there. find HPV with a black light. Dude, I used to sure. get... We, we use a condom. See, ah. as you should, because right. you don't fucking know each other. Right. Yeah, and not only that, but he, here's another thing. Here, here's the ultimate problem, right? Condoms help prevent STDs. But you can have problems at the base of your penis. HPV can be transmitted through the balls, for sure. Balls. 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 I'm talking balls. like this area. Balls. Balls. You can have yeah. herpes... <laughs> I mean, I'm my HPV riddle balls that flies are flying around. I have to be honest with you, I'm not as concerned with getting a disease as I am concerned with getting pregnant. Are you not on birth control? I shouldn't ask. I do know, I do sync my cycle, but I didn't know what part of my cycle because you can only get pregnant when you're while you're ovulating. So I didn't know where I was at in my cycle, and I just was like. That's called I'm the rhythm. I'm almost method. 34 years old. You're right. I can't. You can't be accident. Accidentally, yeah. That's just not. I don't think I would feel comfortable at this point having an abortion. Wow. Because right. it's like, what's my excuse? 100. percent I don't feel like it. I don't know. I just, for me, that's not something I want to put myself through. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. If you had slept with that guy, yeah, and he had gotten you pregnant, yeah, you would have had his child. I mean, dear God, I hope not. Right. Prefer to not even get to that. That's why I don't want to be having that conversation. I probably would have taken plan B if we had had sex. But Uh, that also ravages your body. Right. You also don't want to be doing that. It's I'm I'm so balanced right now. I'm in the best place I've ever been in. I do not need to be knocking my shit off center for some good dick. However, I deeply regret it. (laughs) It's really great. Like it's really the most conflicted I've ever been about. Yeah, it's the, to to me, this is the first time we've heard a, the absence of what most people would call a, a mistake has led to a regret. Right. You know, it's the you withheld. Yeah. Uh, and we've all been there. You know, something I have found 
for, for my younger years, it was certainly the case of like me <laughs> trying to have, you know, unprotected sex with people I was seeing or whatever. And <coughs> they were push to, for the condoms. Yeah. As I've gotten older, it has flipped. Mm -hmm. Right. Completely. That's wild. I, where I am keen to protect myself mm -hmm. and women that I've been okay, with whatever. are very cavalier. Not all, certainly not all, but I have been in sexual situations where, especially after like 26, where I, I don't even know we're about to have sex. Right. And like things are happening and all of a sudden you're just inside the person. <sighs> and you're like, wait, what, what the fuck? Like, we didn't have a conversation about birth control. We didn't have a conversation about STDs. Like, you didn't ask me. I didn't even know we were about to have sex. It's so right. upsetting. Like, I just want to feel inside Where did this me, come break from? Up. <laughs> what? what? I just want to feel you inside me, senior break up. Please, Papa. Uh, those Espanol ladies. No, you know yeah. what? It's honestly really fucked up. And I've been, I've become so, like, responsible to protect myself, even in an emotional way, like I was seeing a guy a couple months ago who we were like messing around a lot, but we weren't having sex yet. And then I could tell that he was kind of getting emotionally invested in a way and I like wasn't sure. So like we were gonna have sex and I was like, hey, before we have sex, we should talk about like the fact that that doesn't mean that we're like together. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important to like lay the foundation for what this means right now because I think that I've gotten into so many fucked up situations by just having sex with someone and then never having any conversation whether it be in the moment about like pregnancy or STDs or about the next moment about like what's gonna happen does this mean that we're friends who fuck are we together like it gets so messed up because we just act like it doesn't mean anything and it's just not true like maybe for some people it it can be like that disconnected and that cavalier but like i don't know any women who truly 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 in their hearts fuck someone and then they're like it'd be dope if i never talked to that person again mm -hmm. like which is not and then we're having to do all this emotional labor to like act like it doesn't matter when it's so much yeah in the moment it's more challenging to be like okay this is going to change something a little bit and we just need to like commit to being communicative right yeah but that like baseline honesty or vulnerability feels like so scary mm -hmm. that people would rather just put themselves in like bad situations time and time again than to like lay the groundwork. Be like, mm -hmm. okay, maybe this is mean we're gonna be dating, but like right. we now need to have a new kind of dialogue right. around the fact that we're fucking. Right. I think mm -hmm. people hate the dialogue too because it kind of like squashes the excitement. Makes have a short horrible. conversation know, as soon as we start fucking we're gonna forget that we had that fucking conversation totally. and it's, a, it's an illusion anyway but like there's this thing there's this idea that like somehow being like okay let's talk let's talk uh you know logistics for a second there's this fear that that's gonna what's like, your game plan here the experience yeah mm -hmm. but it's, it's not it's it's not true for me i don't know how men feel but i feel so much more relaxed and so much more open to the experience when i feel like we are on the same page it really freaks me out to think that Honestly, in a weird way, I get more bugged out that someone likes me more. Right. It doesn't freak me out as much that I would like them more because I can handle myself. Right. I'm concerned that someone else is going to get in their feelings and I'm not going to be on the same page. Right. So I just want to make mm -hmm. sure because it's very rare that you meet someone that you're like immediately like we're we are right here together. Right. Like that's why I'm single. That doesn't surprise me about you. Because, what? Because you are a person, a relationship with you is a coveted thing. Yeah. For whatever reason. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've, known, oh, I've known you a long time. on the outside? And everything. Friendships, relationships. People really dr are drawn to you because of, I think, A, your awareness of who you are. And B, you're just kind of like strong. You know what I mean? And people like that. And right. th I feel like people want a lot of your time and attention. Exactly. So it doesn't surprise me that that is a concern of yours going into a relationship because it should be a concern for you, as you know, anyway. Right. Because with your friends, everybody constantly feels like you don't give them enough attention. And there's only so much time you have. I mean, but, yeah. It's crazy. I feel like that's, to me, you are one of my like ideal bi-coastal friends that I have. We have a perfect relationship. We have a fantastic relationship. You talk and I listen. I talk, you listen. We're there for each other, but we don't require tons of each other's time or attention or whatever. And, like, and we I never feel like get that's mad we're such at good each friends. other. I've never, we've never gotten mad at each other. No. I, I got friends too. Uh, you're, who are you? 
Hello. I got friends on California. <laughs> no, it's really interesting. You have a great and true. friendship. I love yeah, it. me too. I'm so grateful. Maybe one day you can have some of my yeah, attention. Yeah, one too. day when you finally figure out what sign I am, maybe you can know me. God. Well, listen. Um, I think that just about wraps it up here. Uh, where can we find you? Where can people listen to you? Do you think this was a good episode? Oh, tremendous. It tremendous. Probably our best. Okay, well, awesome. I know that's not true. Very low um, bar. <laughs> you've done four episodes. <laughs> uh, nine. Yeah, I think you're number nine. Um, okay, you can find me personally at S Simbari. S-I-M-B-A-R-I is how you spell my last name. And at So Retrograde is my podcast on Instagram, and then that's So Retrograde on Spotify and iTunes. Awesome. So Marsh, the Watch the space. Yeah. And uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you We've so much for having me. I'm so sorry that I guess every side except for your side. All good. As always, uh, email us your mistakes at uh, g- oops the podcast at gmail.com. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter. Every place Julio is at not Julio with a J. Mm-hmm. I am yes. at Francis CC Ellis on Instagram. And uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Adios.